In this fourth lesson about systems engineering, we focus on the impact of systems engineering on business in terms of improved quality, reduced cycle time, and less rework. So since the scientific revolution, we've made most of our progress by reductionist thinking, by becoming specialists in smaller and smaller areas. And that's a wonderful thing. It's allowed us to make great technological leaps. And in fact, that's what Taylor made in art in the 19th century. But that works well when you're dealing with narrow domains and to be honest with you, relatively simple problems. What we're dealing with in the 20th and now 21st century are cross-domain problems. They're complicated and they're moving into complex. At that point, the value doesn't come out of one specialty alone. It comes out of multiple specialties working together to find the right answer, to understand the problem, get to the right solution. And the real value of a system comes out of interrelationships, out of interactions. Now you can either plan those and have them go well, a 787 flying safely to its destination, putting a man on the moon, or you can fail to plan and understand the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 and the battery issue that wiped out an entire product line and did great damage to a brand. So systems engineering is all about pre-work rather than rework, understanding those interactions, looking at those interrelationships, bringing multiple specialists together to see a problem from all angles, gather all the information, devise the best solution, and minimize unintended consequences. Systems engineering demonstrated, even in early projects, methods to effectively manage complexity and change. In modern designs, complexity is increasing as well as the rate of change. And as a result, managing risk becomes increasingly important as life cycle costs are committed early, even though they're not expended until later, which results in a lag of decision impacts on budget and schedule. A study published by Haskins in 2004, focused on the costs of corrective actions when compared to the cost of correcting them at the requirement stage. The reference case is taking corrective action at the requirement stage. In the design phase, corrective action costs three to eight times what it would have cost to make the change during the requirements phase. In the build phase, costs increase to seven to 16 times. Once you reach testing, it costs 21 to 78 times what it would have cost to correct the issue during the requirement stage. And then issues identified during operations cost 29 to 1,615 times what it would have cost to correct in requirements, with a mean of 250 times that it would have cost you to correct it before the design process starts. In 2014, Inkosi pointed out a useful explanation of the motivation for systems engineering. Quote, it is not hard to know when systems engineering fails because when something important goes wrong, it usually makes the news fast. People get hurt, programs are delayed and over budget, and the law becomes involved. But when systems engineering goes right, no one notices, which is how it should be. Unquote. In 2012, a group that included the Software Engineering Institute of Carnegie Mellon published a study of 148 projects. At low levels of systems engineering capability, only 15% of projects achieved high project performance, measured with respect to budget, schedule, and technical requirements. 52% of the projects resulted in low performance. At high levels of systems engineering capability, 57% had high project performance, with only 20% at low performance. A separate study published in 2013 investigated return on investment of systems engineering and found investment in systems engineering efforts had significant and quantifiable impacts on projects. The ideal level of systems engineering effort for projects is around 14% of total program costs. In the studied projects, the median level of systems engineering effort 
was only 7% of total program costs, or about half of the recommendation. If a project adds systems engineering effort to a project that has none, there is an ROI of 7 to 1. The, the thing that you have to understand about systems engineering is it is designed to be entirely scalable and tailorable. You do not have to take on the billion or multi-billion dollar problems. In fact, one of the organizations that we're dealing right now is Keurig, the organization who makes the pod coffee makers. Not a system that we would think of as overly complex, but as you deal with problems in the marketplace and you wish to be as effective as you can, obviously you've got multiple interacting pieces, you've got mechanical issues, you've got electrical issues, et cetera. The key to bringing it, quote unquote, down to that level is to get away from process and get back to principles. It's about looking at the problem from all angles, all of the specialties who are going to be involved. What are the reliability concerns? What are the manufacturability concerns? What are the usability concerns? Looking at the problem from all those angles, collecting and organizing all the information and jointly finding the right answer. If you can stay at a principle level, then you can scale the practice, the processes, the methods and the tools up or down to solve the particular problem at hand. In projects with the median level of systems engineering effort, that 7% I referred to before, there is still a 3.5 to 1 ROI for additional investment in systems engineering. This is a thumbnail sketch of systems engineering. To learn more, there are multiple options for formal learning. INCOSI has a multi-level systems engineering professional certification program with three levels. Associate Systems Engineering Professional, Certified Systems Engineering Professional, and Expert Systems Engineering Professional. There is also an Introduction to Systems Engineering course developed by the University of New South Wales in Australia and offered on Coursera. And to learn more at your own pace, I'd recommend the following for in-depth reading. The INCOSI Systems Engineering Handbook, 4th edition, the ISO IEC IEEE 15288 standard, and the Systems Engineering Body of Knowledge, or CBOC, located at cbocwiki.org. Finally, the 2015 video from the Chesapeake INCOSI meeting that includes a presentation by Gary Roedler provides an excellent perspective on the recent evolution of systems engineering.